everyone. Welcome to Sorry You Went Viral. This is the podcast that's all about the stories that have really set social media alight over the last week or so, the things that have got you all talking and watching and uh, reading and engaging. And of course, we want to find out the human side um, to all of those stories as well. So my name's Hannah. And I'm Tim. And let's start with what's gone viral this week. And um, we'll start off firstly, um, I'll be honest, I'm not really a camper. I've been put off camping ever since uh, I went to like V Festival in 2008 or nine, And mm. it was literally like the Battle of the Somme, the mud, the rain, the, the <laughs> rubbish tent. And it just put me off. And I saw this clip this week um, from a woman called Mia Kelly, from uh, who was at Creamfields. And it brought all my horrors back. Oh. Let's just uh, show you it. <laughs> it's hell in there. It's in. horror. You have to be a certain type of person to survive. Oh, I mean, oh my God. That is my worst nightmare. I had something similar, but not quite as bad as that. That's just mud soup, isn't it? Um, and Mia, as you said, she'd, she'd posted in the caption, she'd said, there's no shame. Uh, if you're at Creamfields 2023, just go home. There's yeah. no shame in it. We did. And I actually did have a similar thing with Lewis back at, we were at the thing called Electric Picnic in Ireland good few years ago now but yeah we 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 left before we were due to <laughs> similar kind of thing but 1.6 million views for it i mean you normally get all the shots of glastonbury don't you when it's um when it's a muddy glastonbury i think it was pretty dry actually this year yeah yeah but this one i mean who on earth would a attempt to not only pitch a tent sleep in a tent get in and out of a tent in in that and it's just it's just beyond beyond me but it's i love this I love this because, um, especially Creamfields, you know, especially on social media now, everyone's posting all their like photos, having a great time. Look how cool and hip we are, and this <laughs> is, the reality is just mud everywhere. Uh, uh, so well done, Mia, yeah, um, for that. But yeah, uh, definitely put me off going to any or camping at any other festival in the near future, or just ever um, anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hotel. Um, <laughs> Next up, this image I saw. I admit, I fell for this image. I was um, at a wedding on, on Sunday and just scrolling through Twitter with the Liverpool-Newcastle game. And um, I'm sure, being a big football fan as you are, you know that Newcastle went 1-0 up and then Liverpool won in the last minute. And um, there's an image that went on social media of uh, the Newcastle assistant, a guy called Jason Tindall, I think, basically putting his mouth, uh, his finger to his lips, um, which you can see on the video feed, telling Jurgen Klopp, the Liverpool manager, to shush. Just really kind of antagonistic, kind of uh, bad sportsmanship, I suppose. And you're um, Liverpool, am I right? You're Liverpool? Yeah, I am. Okay. So obviously he was gutted going one nil down and then ascending off. But then, as I said, Liverpool won at the end and... This um, photo went viral on social media of Jurgen Klopp appearing to shush back, as you can see on the video feed. But it wasn't actually real. Um, this was photoshopped by a guy called Lou, who's on uh, is a graphic designer on Twitter as Lou Visuals. And if you look really carefully, it's hard to see even on the video feed. You can see he's put his Twitter handle in there. But because people so you know, caught up in the game and celebrating. They're sharing this this picture if it's real. And this got picked up by news uh, news sites, even I think it was on the Telegraph sports front page um, because people thought it was real uh, and it wasn't. Oh, I mean, it's just it's a bit scary, isn't it? About I mean, it's pretty tame when it's just sort of, you know, who's shushing who. But mm. if you think what else could be doctored and what could be, you know, what you yeah. think is reality and it's actually just um, been designed in a, in a studio somewhere. So, um, yeah, I mean, I suppose you must have been quite pleased thinking, yeah, go on, Jürgen, give him, give him as good as you. Yeah, as you I completely go. fell for it. I, could, I did wonder why there was a handle on the picture but because I was just watching through Twitter, I was getting updates. And again, because it's such football, it's so tribalistic and you've won. And of course, you just share things because, they, you know, you feel like this is great. Look at getting one back. But you don't check. And, you know. How you, did you find out? How did you find out that it was actually fake? Because I think I saw 
Lou's tweet basically saying uh, it's not real. And then again, we talked about community notes last week. Someone put community notes underneath to yeah. say, um, this isn't real. Not real. But as I said, it got to the point they got so believed it was on the front page of newspapers. Ah, uh, it's astonishing. Yeah. Well, um, talking about um, stories where you think you're seeing something and seeing the yeah. full picture and it's not actually quite um, as it may initially seem. Um, Dua Lipa, the um, a pop star, amazing success. Um, she has been uh, pictured or videoed, actually. And mm. it was a video that I think it must. Did it go on her TikTok or something like that? or Something like that. Yeah. And got picked up like... by Pop Crave. I don't know if you heard about this. This is hugely popular US um, account. No, Based... I haven't pushing out kind of important but also completely random celebrity photos and videos uh and yeah Dua Lupa um on a barbecue and the caption really inspired Not her on a barbecue at a barbecue at a barbecue <laughs> <laughs> that could be interesting but it's yeah. just kind of it, it is in a showbiz way Dua Lupa cooking shrimp in a new video it's just like the the effort has gone into that yeah um but, you know, I'm not the best at barbecuing, I admit. But, um, and I looked at it and went, okay, fine. But actually, people have spotted, she, it doesn't seem the barbecue's on. She's just <laughs> turning prawns over on a, on a barbecue. But this video did crazy numbers for Pop Crave. Again, it's really popular anyway. 30 million views this video got on Twitter yeah. like, on Pop Crave. Uh, except um, some users, um, one guy called Island Thumbo pointed out saying i don't know what's funnier this caption or the fact that the grill isn't on <laughs> and that got 13 and a half million views which again i think is really impressive but if you start looking at it and uh, a guy uh i follow ryan broderick from garbage day pointed this out it isn't people necessarily saying oh ha ha it's funny all the dual leaper fans are piling in on him criticizing him and basically saying well she's attractive so it doesn't matter um <laughs> I mean, no one's criticizing her really i mean it's a bit it's a bit bullshit it is a bit stupid, silly. Isn't it, to kind of like be just stood there you know fake grilling but i mean um but i mean no one's no one's saying this makes you you know ugly or i'm not gonna or i don't like you anymore i don't like your music or i'm not gonna be your fan anymore but it's just like it's just a bit silly so but then again obviously like all the people who are her you know staunch fans are gonna defend her but what a weird defense just like don't have a go at her she's really pretty well it goes back to that tribalism on yeah. social media you know like like um football fans you know pop star fans of pop stars are hugely um protective of their stars i mean it's a, mm. it just goes back to the kind of banality of showbiz stories where it's feeling like just turning over a cold prawns on a cold barbecue but uh, you know hey it does great numbers so there must be something in it speaking of um, great numbers what a transition um <laughs> <laughs> you go ahead hannah go on with the next story so i love this story so everyone i'm sure would have seen um donald trump with his latest legal wranglings um and when mm. he was arraigned or um charged as i think we call it in the uk yeah. um uh, for the, the the latest things with regards to um trying to overturn the results of the of uh, the last presidential election. So the, the, this is the first time that Donald Trump has tweeted in about two years anyway, because as you may remember, he was banned from the site initially, then set up his own social media platform and seemed to just use that. Uh, anyway, Elon Musk has obviously let him back in on giving him, giving him access again to an account. So it's the first time he's tweeted in a long time and he posted a photo of his mugshot. And despite all of the legal cases that have happened so far, this is actually the first time, this is in, happened in the state of Georgia, the first time we've actually, we've actually seen uh, Donald Trump's mugshot shot um, or that one's actually been taken one one would assume so the mugshot was he Donald Trump tweeted it and has is now very effectively using it as a um a yeah. kind of campaigning tool essentially yeah. he looks very stern you can see on the video feed here it's it's classic classic Trump really that picture alone seen 250 million times uh, on on Twitter but the brilliant bit about it that when you get your have your mug shot taken, you also get your vital stats taken as well. So, um, okay. so um, his self-reported height and uh, and weight, and I should emphasize that self-reported, um, has provoked quite uh, a lot of amusement among viewers. Um, he claims that he's six foot three, which I think is probably about right. We can all guess that, and only two hundred and fifteen pounds. Now. 
in the UK, we work more in stones and kilos, really, don't we? But yeah. that's it's about that's about fifteen stone. Mm. Now, now one uh, tw- Twitter account called uh, "Call to Activism," which is very much left leaning, Democrat leaning, anyway. So you know they're going to be the first to sort of jump on this sort of thing and uh, make mockery of it. Um, but uh, one person has said, uh, "Here's an incomplete list of athletes with the same height and weight as Donald Trump, who said he was six foot three and two hundred and fifteen pounds." Um, one of them you can see uh, first up is quarterback Aaron Rodgers, who is six foot two and two hundred and twenty three pounds. So apparently, <laughs> chap on the right is um, weighs more, is heavier than Donald Trump uh, seen there on the left. So, yeah, you make up your own minds on that. Um, I, I do. Rem- I do recall that a, a long time ago when he was president, actually, he had his um, official doctor who like it's routine to give out the stats of the president when they're in office. And uh, this the doctor at the time had had publicly announced to the whole world that he was this very low weight and and um, very good height and he was basically uh, you know an athlete um and this is a guy who eats mcdonald's every day and everything mm-hmm. so it's basically impossible but uh, that guy then went on to get a very very plump position within the white house and within the government at the time so um he's up you know it's again it's just like you know it's it's alternative facts continues and continues <laughs> Don't they say that muscle weighs more than fat? They so do. technically, so it could be true. Could uh, <laughs> it? I <laughs> mean, no. no. I think. Oh, look, it's hard. Look, you know, I, as someone who's also trying to improve their uh, weight loss with going to the gym and stuff, it is. Yeah, me too. Be. So it, you know, it is a bit personal, but at the same time, yeah. Look at those photos again. The photos of this political account have shown are not necessarily the most flattering of Donald Trump either. So, uh, yeah, you can really see he's a bit more than that. But but he obviously just, you know, again, it just goes to show he just does not care about what is true and what's not. And in fact, the more absurd the lie, um, the more he seems to sort of like uh, get sort of like a backwind of this, of this and just go, yeah, I'm going to run with this because it's even more unbelievable um so yeah it's it's crazy but um quite funny at the same time and obviously we wait to see the more serious side of all of these allegations and and uh, charges against the former president and how that's going to pan out through the course of like the next year with presidential election looming as well but anyway that's my kind of u.s political coverage anyway the kind of <laughs> Right, it's that bit in the podcast when we talk about what it's like to go viral. Now, you may remember that um, a couple of months ago now, we covered a story about how one dad's complete and utter dedication to getting his daughter to Taylor Swift and to seeing and or hearing at least a Taylor Swift concert went viral. Let's just remind you of the clip that we're talking about. So that clip, that gorgeous, gorgeous clip, uh, was shot by Dan, who has a TikTok uh, account called K and R's Dad, and unbelievably, that video has been seen more than twenty six million times which is um quite sort of like mind-blowing in and of itself you can also see if you're watching on the video feed at the moment we are so pleased to be joined by dan super dad so (laughs) welcome to you thank you so much for joining us on the podcast um the video is glorious um kira is clearly having the best time ever you look like you're not um (laughs) talk us through first of all how you found yourself in a car park outside a taylor swift concert in the pouring rain Sure, sure. So that that was back in May. Um, yeah, there was a concert at Gillette Stadium in Fox Row, Mass. And, you know, she had, just like everywhere else, she has a series of, of multiple days of concert. You know, it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday night. And, um, you know, we had tried to get tickets through the online buying portal twice. I had, you know, there was, I think there was a, there was an early, if you were early registered, you could get a ticket. And then there was another opportunity if you had a Capital One credit card, which I was a customer of. Um so I, I tried both times to do that, but I got, got timed out on the queue both times. And then, you know, I'm not um, a stranger to buying resale tickets for events. But when I saw the uh, price gouging that was happening on the Taylor Swift tickets, I said, that's just not that. That's not, that's what not it. it. What was uh, it? The tickets, um, the, 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 the nosebleeds of the cheap seats were <laughs> over $1,000, I think. 
Um, yeah, yeah. So any anything worthwhile to get was, you know, I mean, there was some north of ten thousand dollars a ticket, so it was, wow. it was a little out of control. So you know, there was there was some folks doing some charity raffles. We, you know, I, I probably still spend five hundred bucks trying to get tickets uh, mm -hmm. through other through other other methods. And then, um, so leading up to the show, I think it was Wednesday before. Kira's friend from school, her mom um, has some business related to Gillette Stadium, and is she gets tickets to every show because of it. And she invited new Kira was this you know diehard Swifty and decided to invite her to join her for the show. Um, by Thursday, the mom called my wife and said that the tickets came and unfortunately they, they were, they weren't four for one night. They were two for two separate wow. nights. So mm -hmm. bubble oh. burst, the world's ending, nothing else can happen. Um, I happen to have a very good friend who lives. Um, there's very few homes that are in walking distance to Gillette stadium. It's not in Boston. It's out in the suburbs and it's kind of down like a main route and you really one way in one way out. But if you live in the area, you can come in town through another another way. And and um, a friend lives nearby there, so I didn't. I wasn't gonna sit through all the traffic and all that to get there. But my uh, I had called my friend to see if we could park in the driveway, and uh, we ended up doing that and walking over to the stadium because around Gillette Stadium, like a lot of places now, there's a mall, there's restaurants, there's all that type of stuff. So um, I had offered to her on Friday night to go over there and. You know, listen to some music from outside and blah, blah, blah. And yes, I know there'll probably be other people there. You'll have a good time. And she wasn't feeling it. It was a beautiful night. Um, not a drop of rain and not a cloud in the sky. And um, she didn't want to go. So Saturday morning, however, you know, she decided to ask if the office still stood. And um, asked you can't take it back then. You no. can't take it back. Yeah, whatever. So. <laughs> So I'm like, this won't last long. It's pouring out. We'll go over for a little bit and, you know, we'll have dinner and we'll leave. We ended up, you know, there from start to finish. Wow. Um, it's a free so, yeah. concert or something, isn't it? It's a long time. Oh, it was long. Yeah, it was very long. I was I was shocked at the fact that we did it. And then there was probably, I would say a couple, uh, maybe up to 2,000 people outside. I was going to ask. I was going to ask you that because I mean, like, as you know, obviously, it's an amazing thing that you did to stick to your guns and actually follow through with the offer, um, even with the weather forecast. But it looks like there's there's a ton of other people out there doing exactly the same. Yeah, the video wouldn't have happened had it not been a crowd because we were where we were standing. The entrance to Gillette Stadium, there's there's like a big opening, and you can see straight in. You could see the jump with the big video screen she had, and. And you could see, um, you could see, you could see. I mean, she tore the yards away, thirty yards away. But you could see her on stage, and you could hear everything perfectly. Um, and then we kind of had this really nice spot, and then the crowd started filling in around us. And I'm six foot four, so um, you know, putting her up on my shoulders, you know, gives her a good vantage point. So <laughs> able to give. You know, she's thirteen now, so she's not sitting up on top anymore. But she I had her on my. <laughs> And, uh, I, guess, and, I mean, like, yeah, that's some strong shoulders you've got there as well. Yeah, Tell me you didn't have her up there for three hours. It wasn't three well, hours. I was just going to say, just to cancel, clear out any 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 myths, I'm an honest, God-fearing man. She was not <laughs> up there the entire time. No. <laughs> okay. 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 Good. We, we ran into some we, – we, we just moved to a new town, and um, we grew up in – you know, she's from South Boston, a neighborhood in Boston. Um, so am I. But um, – we, some of her friends from South Boston had been there as well, so we were able to. She was able to hook, meet up with those girls and and have a good night for the rest. So of the, the reason, one of the reasons why we're obviously talking to you today, though, is because mm -hmm. you you filmed it. You filmed your experience there, and then yeah. that video just completely took off on social yeah. media. So right. whose decision was it to film the moment? And are you kind of like active on TikTok anyway? So. I film, I, you know, I have a friend who um, is, well, I film more of a mentor who was, he's, his name is Ray Flynn, was former mayor of Boston, and uh, he worked, at, he was the ambassador of the Vatican. And and Ray oh. wants to, Ray, Ray worked for a gentleman who ran for U.S. President um, uh, Hubert Humphrey back in, you know, eight, Ray's almost 80, is 80, around 80 years old, so it was a long time ago when he was a young kid. And when Hubert passed away, Ray was the keeper of all the photographs from from the event, and um, his uh, Hubert's wife, Mr. Humphrey's wife, called Ray and asked for photographs for you know from the campaign, 
and um, and Ray realized at that point that he didn't have a single photo or video of him with Hubert Humphrey. And so he he gave me the advice once, always take the picture, always take the video. You'll you'll regret it if you don't. Yeah. And so I've always done that. And so I you know, it's more for myself and more to share with my wife who wasn't with us at the time. She was, you know, she she didn't she 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 was just unavailable to come sit on the rain, I guess. But um, <laughs> so I just got I have a habit of doing that, of, of just always recording <laughs> and always videoing and um and having these cool experiences uh to remember ourselves. And then um so that's kind of how it happened. And it was more like just because I, you know, I, I had mentioned to Tim when we talked earlier that there was um, there was another video that was way more emotional and probably would have 100 million views if I put it up. But it's her like reacting to Taylor coming out um, uh, age. And, you know, she's a 13 year old middle school girl and she's like, I don't want that online. So, yeah. Okay. Had, so yeah. Not, that we, not that we sat down and picked which one we we're going to put up. I just thought it was a fun video. And, you know, I've been on TikTok, but I, I think I posted one, like, one video before that. Not really. I'm not a content creator. And um, we put that up, and then it just took off. It was like a million and a half views um, before the end of the day, the next day. And then it just... And it just spiraled from there. And then, yeah, so tell yeah, us what yeah. happened afterwards, because, I mean, obviously, you'd seen... Well, you'd heard, at least, Taylor Swift, mm -hmm. so your daughter is thrilled about that. Then sure. suddenly... The story's going viral. And yeah, then, really then what happened? It's pretty interesting. You know, I, I you know, I'm a I'm a I'm a pr pr protective dad and I got nervous about the exposure piece of it. And um you know, the you know, the comments start and everything else and ninety nine point nine percent of super nice comments that I I'm a, you know, I'm I'm still awaiting my award that everyone said I should have Father of the Year, no one's dropped off. <laughs> um the year's not over yet. So there's that. And there was some insulting stuff in there. And it was more about me than her, which is great. Um, I don't care. I, I worked in public life for about a decade and been called all kinds of names, so it doesn't bother me. Um, but I didn't want her to expose that. So I'm like, like chasing down comments and deleting stuff and doing all this stuff. Kind of got a little little intense on it for like, it only lasts like a day or two. But um, but that, so like, you know, and all these great comments from people, I'm getting phone calls from folks. Um, I guess it was on Inside Edition and another uh, Good Morning America. And then um, a woman kept sending me clips from um, the news in Spain. Um, <laughs> so wow. it, it kind of took off that way. Um, my, you know, it, and then, and so the TikTok th um, side of it and the kind of the, that was all taking off. And, uh, you know, I'm like, all right, well, you know, part of me is like, all right, what do I do with this? And like, is this, can I monetize this? And like, kind of think of that way as well. I'm sure everybody does when this happens to them. They think it's like winning the lottery. It's really not. But it's, um, <laughs> so the concert was on Saturday, video, video on viral on Sunday. On Wednesday or Thursday, I got an email from SeatGeek.com who asked if we wanted to go to the show down in New Jersey on Saturday night. And I'm like, sure. Brilliant. Yeah, it was cool. And I'm like, well, you know, Boston, so I'm going to need, you know, transportation and a hotel and da, da, da. I'm like, oh, yeah, we'll take care of all of that. So I'm like, that's pretty wow. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, um, so we ended up getting, um, you know, that they send me everything digitally, but then they sent overnight to care of this box. We did another video of her opening the box and it was got it coming and all that. Stop! You're serious! Read it out loud. Kira, we saw your dad's TikTok of you in the rain in the parking lot outside Taylor's show. We wanted to surprise you. We talked to your dad, and you're seeing Taylor Swift tomorrow, Saturday, with floor tickets. We hope you both have an amazing time. Oh my god, you're kidding. Show me the card. That's think? crazy. Turn it around. Isn't that wild? That's crazy. Back to your resale question. The seats that we had in... Well, New Jersey, but it's, it's it's like a New York. It's where the New York Giants, New York Jets play. Um, okay. The seats we had there, the resale on those was like ten thousand dollars a seat. So you look like, amazing. Those views. Well, I you said, see with I said, you know, Kira, we can throw these up online, and we can go. We we're we're, we're, we're a virus. Yeah. To see. We love we love. <laughs> Her mom, now her that's mom, some content for you as well. Oh, <laughs> You're looking uh, for more well, content. If you can suddenly go vlog the tickets court. have just been given as a gift, then... Uh... No, no. <laughs> no. 
What yeah. an experience. I love it. What a brilliant okay. ending to it. I mean, I intended on, I said, I'm like, listen, we could resell these when the, when the European tickets open up, uh-huh. we can, we're, you know, I, I was just saying the, the, her mom is a dual citizen of Ireland. She's got family over there. I'm like, we can go to Dublin. We've been over there already. They love going there. <laughs> we can go to Dublin and see the show for probably the same amount of money it's <laughs> we're going to get from doing this, but she wasn't having it. You know, she was impatient. Yeah. 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 That's brilliant. Yeah, it's cool. So I mean, uh, you know, it's, I think it's a really good point, and again, I think it's great to hear. I mean, I'm, I'm considered with my daughter uh, as well. Is you know, she's obviously a lot younger than mm-hmm. Kira, but thinking about that, the glare of social media, and you know, the the you know, the great thing going viral, a lovely moment for you as a dad, but also mm-hmm. being really protective of her as well, and thinking about. You know, you don't want any backlash or her to be affected by any of the comments. Um, that must be really tricky. Yeah, it is tricky, and then you know, it's it's not just a comment saying you know, in in real life, and in, you know, in school and whatnot. It's you know, every boy in school is now talking about it, and you know, she's you know, and the girls are talking about mm-hmm. it, and they're you know, nobody's you know, she's not really having getting a hard time about it. You know, I'd ask them, "Are you getting bullied about this at all?" And she said, "No," but just you know, this the kind of the way. Oh, I saw your video. You know, the kind of snarkiness. Yeah. Middle school kids can do um, was kind of as as aggressive as it got, but it was um, it is it's it's like anything else. It's a fine balance between you know what you go what, what, what you know what your opportunities and goals are and, and who needs to be protected from any harm from it. Yeah, I think it's lovely. I mean, my uh, four year old she's got into Taylor Swift already. She mm. loves singing "Shake It Off" and. My so does song. Sunny. So does so does my my really? three year old. Yeah, I just got him. I mean, I got him into it. Let's face it; it wasn't like he just selected it from <laughs> the list. But um, but yeah, I mean, she's just got this amazing appeal across all generations and all ages. Mm-hmm. The music is just just too good. You can't stop bopping to it. <laughs> I mean, we may have to do the same thing going to the car park in in London yeah. um, to hear one of the concerts um, mm-hmm. as well. But I I love the story, Dan. I love just your protective nature of your daughter, but also doing so much to help her as yeah. well. And also going viral as well. Yeah, yeah, um, was... But thanks so much for joining us You're today. Right. Anyway. Enjoy. Thanks for uh, reaching out. Thanks so much, Dan. And don't worry, that, that Herogram Dad Award is, is on its way to you at some point. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I guess things are coming overseas by, by a boat still, so. <laughs> <laughs> And finally on today's show, time for the Timeline Cleanser. And this one is lovely. Um, Obviously, we both got kids, um, but you hear about the joy of introducing um, a child to their younger new sibling and a special moment that it is. Um, And this couple, uh, which you can see on the video feed, um, have captured what is literally a perfect moment. Uh, Their names are David and Alicia uh, from Jacksonville in Florida. Uh, They're on TikTok as Young Party of Four. Uh, And they filmed um, their uh, son, um, I don't know his name, um, going in to the hospital room where his mum has just given birth and a daughter obviously must have had the build up expecting it, expecting it and then going to see his young daughter new sister for the first time uh it's so special and magical this um got seen 12 million times extraordinary and if you don't think it could get any cuter it does just have a little listen to this it's okay is she crying say it's okay so don't it's cry okay. That was very sweet. Nice job, Bubba. Can you give her a kiss on the head? Give her a kiss. Oh, say hi, Maggie. Hi, Maggie. I mean, you just, you can't really top it, can you? Singing <laughs> Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star to your newborn baby sister. Um, Maggie, I think. Or Magnolia Grace is what the hashtag in oh, the, the tweet is put. Um, great name. Uh, 
her name. We don't know his his name, but my goodness me, what a future he's got ahead of him. Um, so, yeah, huge congrat- congratulations to the Young Party of Four family. And what a wonderful thing to share with the rest of the world as well. It's um, it's just pure innocence and goodness. So well done. Yeah, it's lovely. It's like what Dan said about capturing those moments. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's just brilliant. What an amazing video to share it again with, with the world and everyone just piling in with their congratulations and their you know reactions to it. It's absolutely lovely. What a lovely way to end today's show. Um, thank you for listening or for watching. Uh, we'll be back next week. Um, we'll be posting highlights from the show and the clips from the show on all our social channels. Just search for us under Sorry You Went Viral. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.